So when you're driving, right, and you're, you're driving a car, you're not thinking about the wheels on your car. And in that same way, when you're doing anything, the patterns that live in your body that you call you, they're just there, right? And you don't know they're there because you are identified with them. You think that those patterns are a part of you, right? And so what happens though, if one of the wheels starts to do this a little bit, right? What is that? Well, you're kind of scared because the wheels doing this and you're sitting here kind of feeling this thing and you're like, oh, that could fall off. In that same way, when you start growing, you start connecting to yourself, you start meditating, you start making leaps, you start accessing a higher version of you, parts of you that you thought were you are going to start shaking. That wheel's going to start doing this, right? So you keep going, we do this work and the wheel's starting to do this more because you're creating a capacity for it to be able to fall off. And what you start to realize is that wheel is not you. And it gets harder and harder to get it back on. And most of us are in a place where we try to get the wheel back on. Well, the second you identify it's a pattern and not me, then it's going to be more and more okay for it to fall off. But what would it do before it falls off? It's gonna get crazier and the whole car has a hard time functioning and it starts to feel really, really off and it's getting scarier and scarier. And you go, if that thing falls off, I'm going to die. If that thing falls off, we're not going to make it. And then you call someone that's going through that. How are you? Oh, I feel totally depressed. I feel like all these things, I don't even know who I am. And you're like, oh, hell yeah. That means you're starting to connect to what you truly are. And you're dislodging from these patterns that you called you up until now. And if you feel a lot of pain and the world feels a lot of pain, that's because a ton of their patterns are falling off. And at one point you can't get the wheel back on. And some of us are starting to realize, I don't know that I want to right? Because life at times is trying to get things that aren't you to come off of you. Why is that? Because you don't know what life could be on the other side of that. What would life be on the other side of it? You know, I was talking to an amazing client the other day and she, uh, she had sold a, a house that was hers that she didn't, wasn't using. And then also the apartment she was in was, uh, she, there were noise issues. So she was having a hard time sleeping. And she said it was so funny because she had a belief that in putting the house uh, and selling the house, she said, every time I have something good happen, I was wondering if something good is happening. So there's a match that something bad is happening. And I said, well, let's take a look. And we investigated it and we started realizing the apartment she's staying in wouldn't be her highest choice of apartment anyway. Meaning like I said, if you and I flew over America, I'm assuming we're just gonna use America for her because we can't get out of the country. So we're gonna pick a city in America. And I said, let's say you didn't currently live in that apartment. I'd love to ask people, if you didn't already live there or if you weren't already in that situation, if you hadn't been in the job for 20 years, would you pick it today, right? And I said, would you pick this apartment? If you could have any place in the world, you could sit in any city in the world, you could be anywhere, would you pick this apartment? And she said, I don't think I would. I said, like, I said, if, like if I said to you, Liz, you have any apartment you want but there's this one here that has a major noise issue and you won't sleep at night. Would you pick this apartment? She was like, no. And I said, so how do we perceive that this is a bad thing that's happening to us? Life is trying to kick you out of, out of an apartment that isn't your highest. Life is trying to kick you out of something that isn't your soul's choice. And if you're only this moment, we wanna pick what we would do in this moment, if every moment you had the slate wipe clean, what would you do? This is how the universe moves because the universe, <laughs> the universe doesn't understand past, right? The universe doesn't understand past. Every moment you get a new opportunity to pick and choose what your life is, right? Every moment, this moment, even if you said, yeah, but I've, 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 I've had that opportunity last year and I ignored it. And then we talk about like, because I'm focusing on that, I'm going to not use it this time, right? I had that opportunity last time and I blew it. So I'm gonna keep being in this thing that I don't love because I had the portal last year to leave and now I, I blew it. So I'm just gonna be here. And 
I want to offer you, if you didn't have most of your current circumstances, we're going to keep the kids. If you have kids and pets, I get it. But maybe they're actually the reason to pick the highest too. But if you and I flew over the country that you live in right now, and I said, you can live anywhere, would you pick the place you're in? If I said you can work anywhere, and I know some people can't work right now, would you pick? <laughs> Allison said, so should I move? Now, I'm not, now, don't take this all the way literally. Everyone's going to be worried that they're all, I'm saying, please take what resonates with you. So many people are like, Kyle said move. No, no, I need you to follow your heart, right? But it's an amazing experience to think if I just flew you in in a helicopter and said, you can have the relation. I mean, not everyone here is single, so it's not anyone, but out of the single people that align with you, you can have them. Who would you, who would you like for a partner? You get to ask with fresh eyes, right? Some people's highest is to stay with someone out of inertia and momentum, and maybe that's amazing and that's awesome, right? But there's some people that go, I have to stay in this. That, that feeling whatever it is we're talking about. That feeling, can you feel that? That feeling is stuckness. There is very little have to, right? If you just change your have to, which by the way, you need the past and future for have to. You change it to get to, it becomes present, right? Check that out. I have to stay in this job. Okay, I get to stay in this job. Now you either love the job or you feel a freedom to potentially leave it because if you have get to, you don't feel stuck to it. The words I have to and I should stick you to the thing, right? It suddenly tethers you to the thing. The thing starts to feel like a weight on your body, not because the person or the thing or the job is a weight, but because you're talking about it like it's a weight. And it's not you're talking about it like it's heavy. You're talking about it like you're stuck to it. You're not. You're not stuck to anything, right? The stuff in your house, you're not stuck to it. I don't care if you inherited it and it was your grandpa's in World War II. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be stuck to it. And when you say you have to, you start articulating to your children, to the people around you, life is stuckness. And in that, we are not interested in seeing if there's a new portal, if there's a new world on the other side of that. It's, we, we aren't even interested in seeing it. And life says when you unstick yourself from beliefs, from thoughts, from stuff, from people, all these different things, life goes, I'm going to give you a new portal. And it goes, what if there's a new way that you haven't seen? And the amazing lady that I was talking to about staying in that apartment where there was noise, we were just like, what would you do? And it opened up so much more. I was like, what would you pick? And it started being like, actually, I think I would pick staying in Airbnbs and not even, and I was like, whoa, and she didn't even pick a city. It like led her to a whole new level of thinking. And I noticed when she talked about what she could do, there was joy in her. When she talked about the apartment, there was stuckness, right? I mean, I've been here this long. And, I, and she noticed that because of the noise thing, she talked to the landlord about it and they were like, you know, breaking her lease. And she was like, so they're giving me this opportunity to leave. And I was thinking, that's the best news. Life said, because you sold that house, I'm going to make magic things happen for you and dislodge you from the front driver wheel right? The driver's side wheel of the apartment that you live in that's now an eight. You know why? Because when you sold that house, you moved up and everything in your life that was a 10 now dropped to an eight because your frequency is higher than it. Can you get what I'm saying? When you let go of one heavy thing, everything in your life that was a 10 could suddenly lower because your bar just got higher right? In saying goodbye to this, or that I'm moving towards this, life goes, oh, achievement unlocked. You have a whole new series of tens here you can't see.